Welcome to this episode of Level with Emily, featuring a conversation with composer, guitarist, performer, remixer, Grant Stemmage Henry. I met Grant at VGM Con this past April 2023 here in Minneapolis, uh, but he's been on the scene for a very, very long time, since at least back to 2003 when he debuted a project called Metroid Metal. And since then, he's become really an indispensable part of the community. Uh, We talk mostly about two projects, although there are dozens upon dozens of projects that you'll find online of grants. But we talk about an original soundtrack he did for the mobile game Card of Darkness that comes from the creator of Adventure Time and loved his music for Card of Darkness. And we also talk about uh, an instrumental prog rock album he did uh, in 2016 called Narrow Band, not for a game, just a passion project of his. And I absolutely loved that album. So we talk about that too. We briefly mention a project he did for a League of Legends spinoff called Hex Tech Mayhem. And uh, we also get in time for some other things as well. Um, subscribe to this YouTube channel. That'd be awesome. Join us on Discord. We're down in the, uh, you'll find that link down in the show notes. And if you can support us financially on Patreon, that would be fantastic. Patreon.com slash level is the website for that. And thank you. Here is Grant Stemmage Henry. Yeah, well, my name is Grant Henry. I go by Stemmage in the music verse. Uh, I've been doing music for fun and on my own for a very long time and got into the video game remix scene uh, going on about 20 years now. Uh, and then I've slowly transitioned over the years to doing music for games and other kinds of multimedia experiences. And uh, I don't know, I think it's a transition that's set a lot of composers actually went through which is which is fun um but yeah i'm primarily a guitar player and love my rock and roll but i've been i've been branching out a lot in the last few few years into all kinds of different fun experiments so um a lot of different kinds of projects going on right now but i'm i'm proud to to make music for a living work at this point in my life never thought Mm -hmm. i would i would do it but it's actually working so yeah that's great um when did that start how young were you did you always know that you wanted to be a musician well i mean i was a i was a rocker i i I picked up a guitar because of steve Vai, and i guess always thought i wanted to be like the guy on stage but i the once i discovered recording i played standing up a lot less and just started (laughs) writing songs uh, being inspired by all the, the bands i loved and trying to ape them and and um you know meeting a lot of really cool guys in college uh never always thought that i wanted to keep music on the side i went to school for multimedia and i did web dev for a a long time e-commerce stuff Mm. and i was like you know if i just keep it on the side it's always fresh and i i think that um when i finally had the opportunity to do it i just you know my wife put it like just go for it if it doesn't work out, you can always get a real job, you know, <laughs> it, can, it can be, it's okay. So I, yeah. I went for it and I found that I feel like it's, um, it's, it's affected me a lot of different ways. I, I don't feel like I necessarily have the same amount of time to do the for fun for me stuff as I used to, but I've also been stretched in a lot of different directions that I would not have been able to otherwise. So, um, you know, I, I I never thought I would do this for a living. I never had the intention of doing this for a living, but I did enough of it, and I've met enough people that here we are. Yeah, your your output, like just on Bandcamp alone, you you've got dozens of albums, and I didn't. Do you know how many you have up on there right now, or how many offerings? I don't. I, I mean, yeah. there's some are albums, some are songs, some are yep. f- featured c- collaborative stuff. You know, I really yeah. don't know. I just know that. Um. There's there's a lot's happened in the last 20 years, and I've met a lot of cool people. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're doing stuff with them or for them, or they're doing stuff for me. You know, the the, the people mm-hmm. part of this is the best part. So, um, but yeah, a lot of it's it's been fun to put out so much stuff over the years. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. I mean, because you are very gregarious. You approached me and introduced yourself, and I was, uh, you know, that's just you. You seem to be very at ease around people and you know you work in a studio by yourself in a room and a lot of people that I have spoken to over the 12 years that I've spoken to people like you they aren't always 
that way. So what in your, you know, life or upbringing is that is that just kind of how your folks are like how did how did that um how's that a part of your personality how's that working i mean i think it goes it goes back to the beginning but specifically for music stuff i just found that the most talented i've met a lot of musicians over my life uh in in scenes and in school but the most talented people i've ever met have all been attached to this video game music stuff like the best shredders the best arrangers, the best producers, and that's just crazy. And I, and I feel like that shared interest just fosters conversation and you realize you might have something to contribute or they have something that you can't do. And so you're just sort of driven to do those kinds of things um, and, and work with as many people as possible. A lot of it, too, is I came out of the band scene. I was in a lot of different bands and, and just got used to playing music with, with a lot of different people before mm-hmm. I started on my solo adventure as well so I'm, I'm i'm drawn to it i also am a control freak and like control and like <laughs> i like giving myself creative input i, I like I, you know i like hands on the wheel but i really love uh i love it when you, you know a couple brains can get together and create something that would never have been created by one person yeah yeah, yeah. so guitar was the instrument you picked up first that was your go-to right away absolutely it was uh yeah. it was uh I was an 80s kid and Slash was my hero and I nice. you know I learned my first yeah. I think uh you know Appetite for Destruction was the first tape I bought with my own money you Guns know? and Roses just for the youngins out there we're talking oh, Guns boy. and Roses just, yes yes Guns and Roses <laughs> yes the, you know I, my dad taught me my dad was a, is a player he plays a lot of different stringed instruments so it was in my house anyway oh, okay. he taught mm-hmm. me the easy way to play um uh Sweet Child of Mine. City. Oh, Paradise, Paradise City. City. Sweet okay. Child of Mine. Years later. Let's just <laughs> yeah, put that out there. Three, the three open chords you needed to take care of Paradise City is how it started. <laughs> and then, you know, and then I, then I, you know, and then I sort of fell off of it because none of my friends were playing music. They were playing outside. They were playing video mm. games. So I dropped it. And then uh, Stone Temple Pilots came around. Oh, the grunge God. thing hit. I had friends mm-hmm. that I met, other peers that played guitar. And that, yeah. I just... It perked me right up. I learned the pentatonic f- thing. I listened. We played. I played Spin Doctors with my buddy. Like all of a sudden, I met people <laughs> who also played, and that got okay. me back into it. But it's always been guitar. I still don't really my little cheapy keyboard here. I just sort of poke at it. I, I when I record, <laughs> I use software to listen to my guitar and then translate it into MIDI data. So a lot of times, okay. I may be writing music on something that isn't a guitar but i absolutely am writing it on a guitar so interesting yeah so so just conceptually thinking of music differently than a keyboardist would right keyboard thinking like right hand is up high left hand is down low you're thinking about it like this right not like this (laughs) yeah yes which is which can be really frustrating guitar is a peculiar instrument uh Mm -hmm. And there's a huge physical barrier on uh, between you and music on a guitar that there isn't really with a piano. You can just lay your fingers down and sound happens. Yeah. Uh, and you can't, I mean, it, 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 it's interesting when, I, when I've when i been given things to play for other people for session work, it's, it's through some guitar plugin they found and they're writing these parts like piano players and I have to go, okay, just want you to know that this is physically impossible for... <laughs> For a homo sapien, just so you know. And so and, and so here's what we're probably going to have to do. And it, there hasn't really been a problem with it. They're like, I know, mm-hmm. you know, it's not it's not the same thing, but I've made it work. It's still it's still my it's still where my brain is. Mm-hmm. Do you read? Guitar. Do you read music? Absolutely not. hundred okay. percent. Do you read tab at all or no? Uh, a little bit. There's never okay. really been much of a need to. Uh, I'm sure. very much a by ear yeah. guy, but it's been wow. very helpful. And then if I and if I get assigned something, normally MIDI comes with it. But yeah, mm-hmm. I tried taking mm-hmm. class piano, and I ended up in college, and yeah. I really wanted to learn to read music. And I, I, you know, would just learn the pieces and stop looking at the sheets and embellish. You know, I <laughs> I couldn't do it. My I'd already been wired a certain way, and I couldn't yeah couldn't get out. But oh my god, uh, it hasn't caused any real problems. And I know a lot of the composers I really really like don't a lot of them don't read music either. So it's not mm-hmm. uh, it, it's sort mm-hmm. of like a. Whew, moment right i'm not going to hit a wall with that i'm not as much of a performer i'm way much more of a songwriter so Mm. uh, i'm okay Mm -hmm. with it Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah of course of course uh 
Yeah, I, I could go into a few different directions here, but I want to go back to something you said, which was, um, oh, just 90, you know, you grew up in the 80s. I grew up in the 80s. So 90s, like I was in high school from 90 to 94, and then college, probably still. But it's like, uh, I, I'm just curious what some of your other like favorite night or 80s guitar bands i mean because i went through an aussie phase with randy rhodes and zach wilde mm. and like i went through that phase but also there's sound garden and seven dust yep. so i don't know yes. i just am curious yeah totally well and from from the 80s it was mostly um for guitar if it was okay i mean <laughs> striper and winger <laughs> like red beach like all that crazy stuff i loved yeah. it yeah. But I could never, I never really went that direction with my playing. It was yeah. sort, of, sort of like watching the X Games. Like I, I'm never going to do it, but it's still cool to to enjoy. I think yeah. the I really was into the police, this the guitar sounds of the Police and the Fix. Oh, yeah. I love okay. the I love they do wild inversions and really cool chimey chords and stuff like that. That was that was I, l learning some of that was uh, the biggest thing in the '80s, and then in the '90s. Um, uh, you know, the grunge thing just sort of took me over. All, all of mm -hmm. the, all of the, the, um, all the Seattle bands uh, yeah. and all that stuff really, really got me and got me. That really helped form the way I think about um, slightly atonal stuff and the mm -hmm. the importance of of creating tension and release and all that. And I, I really came from that. And then I discovered post rock stuff in the mid 90s bands like uh like failure uh hmm. and shiner these are ones that they aren't as well known people have heard they've sort of been discovered more later but they really got into some strange uh territory and that that was really big for my songwriting my favorite band of all time is called self uh oh, cool. it's this guy, okay. this guy named matt mahaffey he's out of out of tennessee and the, his first album subliminal plastic motives from 1995 is wow. change the way that I listen, perceive music. I, I, oh, I, I wow. really just, I did my best to try and ape him in the way that I would approach songwriting and stuff. Um, so, you know, I'm not a shredder. I'm not a really agile player. I can pull it off. I try to make notes matter because I'm not, I'm not a fast player. I've mm -hmm. always been way more into like David Gilmore and Pink Floyd stuff than I oh, have yeah. some of the shredders as far as how I play mm -hmm. um but yeah it was mostly the most of the influences came from bands uh as opposed to okay. guitar players specifically for me sure and, sure and and weird song structures and stuff that's somehow still catchy even though it's completely unpredictable mm -hmm. uh is the stuff that i really got into in the 90s yeah, yeah david gilmore is absolutely one of my favorite soloists like i love yep. the way he plays solos i think i love his phrasing he plays like a singer sings you know i mean he takes breaths and there's all this just creative you know phrase building and harmony and he he just never hits a quote-unquote wrong note which i know we can debate all day about what that means but like i i just Oh my God, I love I love hearing him play and just his tone too. God, I love him. But um, oh yeah, uh, it, when you talked about Slash, <laughs> there are these two solos that he plays in November Rain, which is a ridiculous song, right? It's a totally ridiculous song. But the two solos he plays in that song are so good to me. I just again just beautiful phrasing. Like I think Slash is a great guitar soloist too. I mean, it's crazy. And I don't think of shredding when I think of Slash either. No. You know? Yeah. No, those those are playable solos. Yeah, um, they're playable, they're tasty, they're they're pretty, they're lyrical, they're yeah. I yep. don't know. Very things. lyrical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and he, him just similar with uh with Gilmore uh, Buddy in college told me once that Gilmore makes the pentatonic scale not sound like the pentatonic scale. That was that's his whole was it's completely true. <laughs> um, so and Slash cool. lives there in Blues Land a lot too, but he does mm. all this stuff, extra stuff, and moves around a lot, and 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 yeah. writes his own little song in a song. You know, yeah, yeah. You can sing all his solos. You can yeah. just go karaoke and just mouth guitar the whole. This, people yes. do, you know. Yes, you know? yes, so. of course. I've been that person before a time or two. Um, but let's let's stop talking about others and uh, get back to focusing on on your playing. Um, because one of the things that uh, I 
appreciate about your original music is your songwriting, your ability to structure a tune is really interesting to me and um, uh, fulfilling for me. So I uh, appreciate that that I just I just appreciate your construction. And I felt that whether it was Card of Darkness, which is a soundtrack you did, the game first came out in what, 19, 2019, I think. That sounds right. Yep, and just had a, an update in I don't know a year or two ago, but um, but also your um, I don't know was it a passion project narrow band which is an all you guitar instrumental situation um, really creative songwriting so so yeah let's let's uh, talk about that um, and and let's start with narrow band since we're in this rock world. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so describe it. Tell me tell me about it. Well, I wanted to I I love the idea of um I I wanted to write like a rhythm guitar record, like a guitar that went really hard. Songs that went really hard in the in the rhythm guitar direction. And there are, there are leads, there are motifs, there are things that repeat and that that, that happens, but um, I'm I'm a rhythm guitar guy. I I can almost guarantee you m most of the songs on that record started with drums first. It's having an idea for uh, the backbone and then sort of making things work uh, on top of it. I didn't have it uh, a whole lot of uh, the direction I wanted to take it as far as the the the, the concept was that I I wanted to get these get some songs written first that were somewhat loosely connected uh in in vibe but i i wanted to kind of i didn't want to name the songs until i was done with it oh, uh, cool. and then okay. and what i did was i took i finished my six songs and i because I, I was reading a lot about synesthesia the idea mm. of, of see, seeing colors based on what you're what you you hear mm -hmm. and i i i basically went and i, I actually I reached out to someone on reddit to because I wanted I wanted him to listen to the record and see if he had any insight into what he was visualizing for for this, mm. uh, and he, he ended up not getting back to me. Uh, same with another guy, but I just I basically went. I've, I've always felt like I've had a little bit of this, not as extreme as someone that that writes mm -hmm. a lot about it uh, and really understands it. But I I decided to 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 consider each song and and listen to what they what 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 color do they sound like to me so it's a color themed record i went down a list of pantones and found exactly what pantone i felt matched each song on that record and huh. pantone names are incredible every name on that record is actually a pantone name so no a shit. Yeah, astronaut barossa uh marigold mm -hmm. mercury red yeah uh red ribbon are all so those all came That's from awesome. the colors that I feel best represent those songs. Oh, wow. uh, and narrow band is the is the visible band of light that you can see with the human eye. There's a huge spectrum, and the narrow band is essentially what we can see. So that's where that's the that that's where it ended up conceptually. But mm. at its core, it's just a sort of a space rock romp. Um, mm -hmm. I like to get. I, I'll. I, I. I've always tried to like outline in my head how I approach writing a weird a weird prog song. And I can't. There's not. There's not. A, there's not a whole lot of consistency. Sometimes I'll finish a, a skeleton in a day. Sometimes Barossa. I think I sat on for more like six months. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, it's really just. It's working with all the instruments at once. It's um, not binding yourself to a certain length. I've written thirty-second songs or eight-minute songs. Just when the song's over, the song's over, and just sort of spend time there. And narrow band is the result of of that experiment. Some of your songs uh, that are up have lyrics. There's a lot of song songs uh, that you have done and worked on and collaborated on or written or whatever. So what uh, inspired you with, with narrow band to just this is instrumental only? Uh, I think like I'm I don't I can carry a tune, but I'm not as much of a fan of my own voice. Um, okay. I, but I but I don't mind my guitar playing, and I think for me it's like <laughs> I want to write a song where I can do whatever I want and ride the entire scale of this guitar, and not feel like I need to come back and and track something that I'm not completely happy with. I've always been the most comfortable with just the rock instruments with other stuff twinkled on top. So um, about the same time I was working on that, I did write a song with vocal. Well, maybe it was a couple years before I wrote a song with vocals that I had not 
called Best of Times, and I had not written a song with vocals and lyrics and me singing in a very long time. And I even did the thing where I didn't allow myself to do it, use the computer at all. I sat with an acoustic guitar and I wrote the whole wow. thing front to back. Like, so I had to, you know, not, not this cut and paste word processing mm -hmm. nonsense that we all do. Um, <laughs> and it was really fun to do that. And I, and I thought about doing it a, a, again, but I just had all these like riff ideas. The riff vault was mm. full. <laughs> um, so I, so I, I didn't want to like worry about doing a full record. I was really enjoying EPs at the time and I still do like a mm -hmm. more complete thought and, and less songs. So I just, I just went that way instead. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I love like, do you think of this as a concept album? I mean, is that kind of how you would, would label it? Uh, I mean, I think so, but I don't think it's something yeah. that I, I, I was in a, I had a certain way that I wanted to approach each song. Um, that was similar between all of them, and I had a vibe I wanted to capture, but I, it isn't as much of a story as it's just sort of a state mm -hmm. of mind for me. You know, it was yeah, the songs all feel connected, and I loved the idea of 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 uh, labeling the songs based on how they made me feel in a different way. Um, so it's all connected like that, but it's it's not um, you know, there's not a lot of Morse code in there. <laughs> there's not a there's no hero's tale, but it's it's definitely a concept <laughs> record for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. And just some fantastic bass playing in there, too. Are you? I mean, because I know you did everything, but I assume you're playing actual bass. Yes, I do play yeah, bass. Yeah. I, I play yeah. bass like a guitar player. I try not to. <laughs> I, I, I try to do like I try to do things that, I, you know, I think bass players might do. I always try to follow drums. I try I try to do stranger things, not necessarily <laughs> stick, stay on the route, you know, yeah. but uh, I, I do what I can. I, I do like a really big, big, gross bass sound. <laughs> um, to complement guitar and mm -hmm. and really lock in with drums, so I, I don't know. But yes, I did. I did everything on that on that record. That was all me. Mm -hmm. Wow! And like your drum kit, you got a drum kit down there somewhere, and all the those things. are not th those are not. Well, I had an electronic oh, okay. kit, but those those are program drums. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. Believe it or not, okay. yes, I spend yeah. I spend a lot of time programming mistakes into my drum programming. <laughs> Most people will record a player wow. and they'll just quantize them and then yep. sample replace them and call it. But I've spent I've spent a lot of time trying to humanize drums as much as possible because I that's what I want. I I want it yeah. to sound like a like a dude. I can play yeah. drums, but yeah. but I'm not in a place to record a kit that sounds quite like that. Mm. Um so uh yeah but those are all uh it's all trickery uh you know <laughs> no one can rush a, a feel like a real person so i'm trying to you <laughs> right? know trying to do that trying to do that too you know <laughs> yeah oh uh, well i really really enjoy uh that album and i just look forward to having that now in in my rotation in life because it's i mean it it just really does hit some just really delightful like nostalgia you know um it's got that sound and but yet modern right i mean it's like this wouldn't have been written in the 90s but it's like got that sound and um uh super super enjoyable and i did write down rhythm guitar i'm like you've got a lead and rhythm it's just it's very guitar forward right mm -hmm. obviously but you mm -hmm. know and then it's just that night i loved it i loved it thank you yeah i, I appreciate you listening to it i, I realize it's been yeah. years since that came out i mean it was 2016 and mm -hmm. it makes me realize how how wild things have been since then um and i yeah. have again I, and i will say I've, I've been telling people this the riff vault is full again i have ideas <laughs> good i have to i have to like make time for it my buddy mm -hmm. uh, josh from bonus stage is my uh, accountability buddy which was a term <laughs> that I learned from Mustin the, oh, from the one up yeah, during his talk Mustin. at VGM con. He talked about getting an accountability buddy, someone that will, that Amazing. will, will, will bust on you until you actually get stuff mm -hmm. done. So he's my guy. He's going to write awesome. me every so often and yell at me and send me gifts. And then I'll eventually get this, <laughs> I don't know, narrow band follow up. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just do a, a single. I don't know what, but yeah. we'll, I'll, uh, hopefully more to come in that, uh, yeah. in that realm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess intentionally I ended up being most interested when I noticed it in your original music, right? I mean, because you've got so many wonderful covers and they're, they're great. And we could talk on and on about that, too. 
Uh, but I was very much drawn to Narrowband because of its originality and also to Card of Darkness because that's an original soundtrack, right? So I'm just like, oh, what does what Grant sound like, you know? Hmm. Um, and and so and then literally after hitting play, I'm like, well, I'm going to stay here for a while. This is great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I started in, you know, I, VGM isn't where I started. It's where a lot of people start now. Right, um, but, I but, know. Yeah. But you, but back, but you know, it was it was bands and it was writing songs and you know recording on your four or eight track and it was it was, so it was the songwriting first and then I figured out a way to sort of inject my love of video games into it and every once in a while it will fall off and I'll I'll, I'll do something else and then it comes it comes right back uh, but mm -hmm. no yeah being able to being able to do original music for games is definitely like a that's a that's a that's a dream yeah Never would have so thought that would have been. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, let's talk about Card of Darkness. And this um, uh, is the art hand drawn or something like that. I mean, just really creative, adorable art style. Uh, really difficult card game on Apple Arcade, which seriously, I love having. I love having Apple Arcade personally. Um, so I've enjoyed playing it, even though I'm quite terrible at it. It's very hard, but it's really cute and the music is great so talk to me about card of darkness and how you got involved with that and and then we'll talk about some of the specific tracks too sure sure so the game is sort of a, the brainchild of uh zach gage uh and pendleton ward who's from adventure time he did all the art for the game uh, or a lot of it and choice provisions who is a company that i've done work with uh, over the years and I, you know, I, I was getting pulled in to do this and I, I had an idea about what I thought it might, it should maybe sound like by how it looks. And I, and I, you know, I, I sent like a demo of something and he's like, this is great. He's so happy. Like we got to, we got, this game is hard. This game is the, the art in this game is deceptive on purpose. Yes. Yes. You, you, it is, it is the, it is darkness, right? So I, we went through rounds of, of demo. I should send you a couple of these cause it's fun. You can hear the demo get darker and darker until we landed on the sound we were going to go for. <laughs> yeah. And where we ended up was this sort of mix of like, um, he really likes the secret of mana soundtrack. Uh, mm. so do I. And, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of like old analog sounds and sent some, some demos of things he likes. And so we ended up with this sound I never would have predicted for a game this colorful and bouncy and cute. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, there's a song for each world essentially. Uh, and then, and they're all there, there, it was so much fun writing that thing. I got to do a lot of the weird stuff that I like, but use mm -hmm. a lot of, this was one where I got to use a lot of instrumentation I wasn't used to. Ain't a lot of guitar on this thing, um, right? So, yeah. But I wrote it. But it's all written on guitar. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. And uh, yeah, so we ended up with this very sort of dark, sort of somber, but oddly, you know, uh, intense at times soundtrack for this really colorful game by the Adventure Time guy. It's very, yeah. it's really funny. But boy, it was just a joy to work on. Um, I had a lot of fun working on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You can tell that the music is great, and and uh, there there are just some really fun sounds you got too. So you said you wrote it all on guitar, um, but you don't obviously perform a lot of it on guitar. So then, how are you? Are you but you're using the keyboard to map the sounds, or how did how do you end up you know landing on the sounds that you used? Oh uh, yeah, I a lot of there's a lot of different uh, uh, instrument packages for with you know uh, sampled instruments that I used, and I did pull on a lot of old Casio samples for drums, oh, like really really tiny peculiar uh, 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 lo-fi samples that I could then manipulate into my own uh, kit. And but yeah, it was it was uh you know it wasn't always uh, playing guitar into the computer for these but a lot of the chords and a lot of the melodies you hear definitely started on guitar um um and yeah there are lots of different um different string machines a lot of odd percussion um mm -hmm. uh but yeah, it's it it's all it normally starts with just getting you know getting a a foundation done with the guitar into the machine, and then I sort of go back and move things around and rewrite things and 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 plunk at my cheap keyboard. Um, <laughs> but 
yeah it, it, I, I wrote this like i write a lot of a lot of uh other stuff and it all it's all it's it's a guitar driven record even though you never hear it right yeah i love that that's fantastic um some of the bass stuff uh, particularly toward the end really stood out to me there's a track called the Baxlin delves i think mm. maybe i wonder if autocorrect screwed that up let me look yeah that's, that's, that's song. right that's right the Baxlin delves yeah that's yeah great. <laughs> this bass sound you get in there is bow. Yeah, totally. So yeah. funny. Oh, Very old, God, I love old it. Moog uh, sound. Yeah. And then a lot of like, I'm a big fan of um, a lot of some of the fun uh, solo stuff that uh, Eddie Van Halen did early on oh, where okay. he would he would manipulate his uh, he would manipulate his volume uh, switch into a delay pedal. So, oh. he would, you know, he basically would go. He would just go womp 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 womp, but it had this bugga dugga 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 You know, it has all these oh, all this cool. delay, and that's sort of the idea behind the main sort of flutter in that song is is mm -hmm. just the trick of that 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 kind of uh, dotted delay. Uh, oh, so, very cool. Yeah, Eddie made made his way into my backslid delves, and he <laughs> never knew. That. Amazing. R.I.P. Buddy, yeah. um, Slellen Realm also has really cool bass in it. If I, I'm having a yeah. This some, was this was like yeah. I, I was like Zach, you cool if we get a little, we put a little bit of a groove in there, get a little darker. <laughs> uh, and he was game, and I got to do yeah. some really weird proggy stuff. And he, and he I mean, there, there was really, uh, you know, like sometimes when you when you submit a tune for a project. Mm -hmm. You you do, you don't sometimes you just want to send and let them hear it and then and then and see what they have to say. But every mm -hmm. once in a while, it's worth making a few a tiny case for a track. Like there's an idea behind it, and sometimes that is like all you need for something someone to go, oh, I'm, we're good. That's great. That's fine. Yeah. Um. So yeah, things got stranger and stranger as the uh, as the soundtrack went on, good. for sure. Yeah. Um. It, it's I love how you do a reprise of the title theme, and it's just like, you know, dreamy. The reprise is kind of dreamy. Um, yeah. Why did you do a reprise? Um, this was not originally in the the plan, but they um, there's an uh, the game Zach Gage also did R ridiculous fishing, uh, and there was a uh, rep a dark reprise in that game that he really really liked, or okay. at least an ending track that had a certain vibe, sort of an empty. Uh, uh, ness to it that he really liked, so I wanted to capture that, and I was like, "This is the time to pull back. This is this is the time to bookend." You know, so yeah. uh, it was just taking that and, and turning it into a different piece entirely. It's basically like a rearranging your own song. Yeah. Uh, that's when I blew my own mind. Um, <laughs> so that's what that was, and it, and it's on its own. I think it's a really cool piece. Uh, it could have been oh, the theme yeah. for something for a different game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, well, yeah. and then there's a whole remix album of Card of Darkness from of other artists. So talk to me about how that and how that all came to be. Yeah, so um, I've done a lot of work with uh, Brave Wave, uh, who is a, a company that works a lot with uh, Eastern artists and Western artists. But they've they've brought a lot of old old Japanese composers uh, back to do original music. Um, mm -hmm. And they've been doing that for a long time. And the uh, uh, Mo, who was a big fan of this game and really liked the soundtrack, is like, I've wanted to try and get pull on a lot of the talent they've done work with to to try and put together a remix record uh, quickly. Not some big. They, they've done lots lots of big albums with Brave Wave. Um, so he reached out to a list of people uh, to see who would be into maybe grabbing tracks off of this record off the Brave Wave roster. And what we ended up with was this like completely insane compilation of artists like T Lopes is on here, <laughs> uh, Keiji Yamagishi from Ninja Gaiden. We got Sarah Kobayashi who did Panzer Dragoon. Uh, and I, I ended up pulling on, I've, I've, I've become some somewhat friends with Vince DiCola who did like, you know, Rocky and Transformers soundtrack over the years. And I reached out to him to cover the reprise just because he's a piano guy. He's done these amazing <laughs> piano arrangements. He's like, okay. Let's go. So all of a sudden, this like unbelievable remix record came out of yeah. of Card of Darkness that I feel trumps uh, the original in terms of quality. Um, but yeah, it's just filled with these amazing artists taking these weirdo songs. I, I mean, I gave them stems and, and midis and stuff. Like here's, oh, cool. here's you know, yeah. use what you want, if any. Some people just 
threw it out. Some people did proper <laughs> remixes, but T. Lopes was the first. He sent back a, a draft, Mount Label Grave, which is one of my favorite tracks. It's that weird. track is great. It's weird. He picked that it's one. He was the weird. first one to call a track, and he liked it enough that he finished. He did a remix in like a day. It's got horns in it. It's ridiculous. So wow. yeah, I am I am honored this thing got to happen. It's all because of Brave Wave, and it was wow. a it was a successful experiment. I think they they finished the whole remix record in about a month. But oh between originally reaching out and a couple people having to drop really quickly, we ended up getting uh, every song covered. And we did uh, hmm. uh, Apoc, good friend of mine who does who's in Super Strikers with a, a band I'm in that does stuff with Brave Wave. He was mm -hmm. on here. I, the Super Strikers band I'm actually in. Uh, that's the Brave Wave band. We did a we did a cover of a track on here too. So it was just this like rat race to get this remix record done. A sort of yeah. sort of an experiment. Yeah. Um and it worked and it's an honor. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's so. awesome. It's amazing. Uh where'd you grow up? Did you grow up in California? No, I grew up uh in rural North Carolina. So oh, east okay. of Charlotte, like about an hour. So I there was there. A little draw there, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It it pops yeah. up. Uh yep. and then I uh I went to college in Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Uh and then I was back in Charlotte uh for a while and then moved to uh California in two thousand fourteen. So oh, I've been okay. here almost 10 years. That's crazy. Wow. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of projects that I didn't even get to, but that are definitely ne we need to mention. And there's plenty of time. I'm not, you know, winding down or anything. But um, Hextech Mayhem for League of Legends. Do you want to talk about that briefly? Because, again, I didn't I didn't get to it. But, but I it's, yeah. it's a worthy of a mention. Sure. So that was um, that's by uh, that's uh, Hextech Mayhem is a game centered around this character called Ziggs and Ziggs is a hero in League of Legends. So League of mm -hmm. Legends has all these heroes and Riot decided they wanted to have um, some indie companies build uh, small games centered on their heroes the most popular the most the, the, the heroes that it makes sense for us to take advantage of so sure. uh riot reached out to choice provisions who i do a lot of work for and and we're like what like what do we want to do so we ended up working on this sort of musical it's almost like a it's almost like a cross between a platformer and a ddr game in a way okay uh, <laughs> and it's it's basically ziggs who is this little sort of oh, he's a yordle which I don't know if the best way to describe a yordle. It's sort of a cat, sort kind of not, of but he's just, yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. a little bit of a little lot of things, and he sort of builds bombs in the garage. He's like bombs with duct tape on them, and the whole story is, is is basically he's going around destroying Piltover with his bombs and wreaking havoc. Um, and so I got pulled in to do music for that, and you know, Riot is a very musical company, uh, yeah. big studio there make a lot of music there and but the Ziggs never had a theme song like Ziggs never had a had like a music video or a track so we had to find Ziggs sound so we inter, inter, ended up with a lot of sort of uh found instruments a lot of a lot of bounciness it sounds like it's sort of in the garage the the theme sounds sort of like a like a tinkering thing um wanted it to be a little unhinged like a little off and also kind of wanted it to rock if they were okay for it. Riot's put out some heavy music, so they, they yes. didn't take long to convince them that that was okay. <laughs> yes. So yeah, we made this, uh, I did this, did the big soundtrack for this, this game where it's, it's, uh, I mean, I, and it's, it, the soundtrack is up to, to check out. I feel like it's best in game just because every jump is a kick drum and every slam is a snare consistently awesome. through the entire game. So it's all very much, <laughs> you are sort of the drum section in this game. Um, awesome. But yeah, it was it was tough. I mean, it's working with another IP, so it has to work, and yep. it needs to not change the universe in any way. It's 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 sort of its own, it's its own thing. Um, but you know, it was a lot of fun, a totally different kind of experience. So yeah. Yeah. it was really cool. Tell us about Metroid Metal. That's <laughs> what kicked a lot of this off, right? Uh, yeah, I I did a. Uh, yeah, I did a little video last week, talk or a couple weeks ago, about the fact that it just turned that project just turned twenty. I made a little <laughs> retrospective YouTube video, which is crazy. But yeah, I I just decided to. I was a big fan of a lot of the video game bands that were out at the time, like Mini Bosses and um, the Neskimos, and decided to do my own little prog rock cover of a song from Metroid, the the title screen music, um, and uploaded it to the IGN boards. 
because uh, that's all where I was. There was no social media. And then people seemed mm -hmm. interested in it. So I just sort of kept going. And then fast forward however many years and it got turned into a it got turned into a full band. We've played Magfest a number of times. We've played PAX. We don't put out a lot of new stuff now, but we just sort of play when we can. And that is certainly my introduction to so the 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 deeper community of the video game music scene. It's how I lot of, met a lot of my closest friends and mm -hmm. um and it's it's something it's the reason I've really kept the stemage name. Um, I went through a period where I was trying to decide whether to switch to Grant Henry, which some composers do, or keep the stemage thing. But I was like, mm -hmm. I'm still running into people at these cons, and they're like, stemage the <laughs> like the Metroid Metal guy, and I can say yes, yeah, and like that's that's <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, it's been going a long time, and and uh, again, we don't play a lot anymore yeah, as a group, but yeah. we but we do when we can. We play when we can. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, with regards to gaming, what was that like for you as a youngster? When did you, like, what games did you play and what systems and all the things? Yeah, I think we, we had, um, we had a 2600, which there isn't a whole lot of music going on there, but we started with that. We did get, mm -hmm. we did go through the Nintendo phase. We, we got in, uh, we got a Genesis and then we okay. sold my brother, my, we as my brother and I, right? We were just far enough in age that we weren't in the same world but we still played video games together uh mm -hmm. and we we sold the genesis for the super nintendo because street fighter 2 came out we've so we 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 experienced all that those those were what we yeah. played we got we did the playstation thing and then i missed the i missed sort of the um, the n64 i didn't pick up there mm -hmm. were a lot of systems that i just that were sort of near me but i didn't mm -hmm. actually pick up myself um but i always sort of stay it wasn't until i think the game when the gamecube came out after I graduated college, um, that was when I sort of picked it back up and became sort of an enthusiast again. Uh, but there was a window where I was just playing it in my across the hall in the dorms. I, I didn't really have yeah. it in, in my. There was a lot going on in school, and um, and so I wasn't playing. I was playing a lot of Goldeneye and Mario Kart with the, with with people, but I didn't. There's a there's a lot of win, uh, games that I missed that I had to kind of go back to later. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was definitely. You do whatever your friends do a lot of the times, and yeah, I, I did. I did yeah. have a number of video game friends when I was a kid, so it was a it was a big part of my childhood, mm -hmm. for sure. It, do you game much now? Yes, as I mean, as much as possible. I right. I, I go I go through fits. I, I I'll I'll get on a, a a tear with something, and 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 then I'll have to come back later. It's just it just you know I. I do try to make time for it, and there's a lot of games that I like that, like, um, uh, my wife really enjoys watching certain kinds of games. She really likes the horror games, so, like, we, we're going oh, wow. through Resident Evil 4 right now, as slow as possible. <laughs> yeah. Savor it, take it in. Yeah. Uh, we always play those. Uh, I am excited to play the new Zelda. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a racing game fanatic. I love rally racing, so I'm oh, always trying the, the, okay. the newest rally game, you know. Okay. Um, those get not, super technical. They do. I mean, that's the point, right? Yeah. I get I get excited yeah. about them, and then they, and then they make me sweat and stress me out. But I still love them, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a big, not a big, uh, not a big RPG guy. Really, I love mm -hmm. I love games with RPG elements. I love adventure games. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mm -hmm. the the biggest games I'm not as into. I'm not I'm not really good at shooters, so I don't play a lot of shooters. Okay. I just play lots and lots of indies. Sure. All the indies that come through on on Game Pass, I'll check out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Uh, I, just, I like I like weird games. I like ga uh, games that do something different. I played a uh, Norco recently and it blew my mind. I don't know if you're familiar oh, with Norco. Yes, yes. Okay. I haven't just, played it, but I've heard about it. Just yeah, incredible. I, I, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just nuts. So uh, yeah, I like I like the. Yeah. I heard there's a game that just came out that's uh, um, it's a strategy game, but it's like Typing of the Dead. So you have to type to do to like deploy units and mine ore and stuff. <sighs> Like <laughs> type words. Okay. Yeah. That's so weird. I'll take it. <laughs> That's, That's really the kind of that, weird. Yeah, we it's it. very strange. So we'll I don't know. Always, always trying to find something new. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be talking to, and I've had him on the show a few times before, John Robert Matz in yeah. a week or two. I can't remember when, but I've got a, something scheduled with him about Chia, which I got a platinum trophy in. I mean, it's just, I loved that game and went through it. Once I started, I was like, it's like I barely stopped. I loved it so much. And just, it turns out you played on that soundtrack. So uh, tell, tell me about that. Yeah, well, I, uh, John Robert Matz and I have gotten to work on a, a several things over the years, which is which is really cool. We've, we've uh, tag teamed a few different things on the 
the the, the devolver digital uh showcases that happen each each year he always scores okay. those and i've done you know uh, credits tracks for them and so we, we we keep in touch a lot but yeah that that theme was recorded um probably three years ago and at the time i don't even think he told me what the name of the game was so it was like <laughs> it was like a shadow drop for, for yeah. me like I, I was like oh it's this game i knew this i knew this uh so yeah I, i'm so happy for him and, and the soundtrack yeah. is just incredible and oh, the game it's, so good. it's on epic game store it's on playstation i only have an xbox and i kind of want to mm. make it a couch thing i don't know if it's ever gonna it's gonna come maybe in a year or so to xbox but i kind of yeah. want to wait it out because i want the couch like i want to yeah. kind of sit back instead of doing the computer yep. thing yeah um but he is just a joy he's so oh, brilliant he's great yeah, he's, he's great. such a such a great guy to work with, and he's so. Mm-hmm. I'm always I'm always sending him random questions, musical questions, like, you know, because he's <laughs> just so he's so good with that stuff. Uh, yeah, and incredible talent, incredible player. So, oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. You're gonna have him on. He's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, he's he's fantastic, and um, that game just since you're in a place with winters, it's a great winter game because it hit mm. right at the end of winter here when we still had 70,000 feet of snow on the ground and it was the perfect getaway. So keep that in mind for Very cool. when you it was get a, to play it. <laughs> it. It was a fun It was a fun theme to play on because it's so... Like, I, 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 a lot of my stuff is just kind of weird. I, I like... I, I could try and emulate some some big budget movie composer people I could try and do that but there's people that already do that well so I try yeah. to do something different mm-hmm. um and and every once in a while I hear my song on something so unbelievably professional I, I hear my I hear my playing on something yeah. and and this yeah. was one of those songs I heard this and I'm like this is real music Don, <laughs> this is re- this is real stuff and you put my acoustic guitar in there what are you thinking but it's it's awesome he's he's great and it's a joy to be able to play on his on his real music. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joy to hear it. Um, yeah, with acoustic, electric, what do you, I mean, did you, was electric guitar your very first or was acoustic guitar your first instrument? It was electric. It, it was, was electric because uh, you said yeah. Steve Vai, so. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever crappy distortion pedal I had at the time, <laughs> never, it never sounded quite as good. But no, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very much an electric guy, but I have all the, mm-hmm. I, I record a lot of acoustic. I did a lot of, I've done, acoustic several times for for john robert matz i've did a lot of acoustic for steven universe the cartoon right uh, that's right because greg greg was always playing his acoustic and so all the acoustic playing was was that so i've acquired <laughs> you know i have my steel string i have my classical i got my tw- i bought a 12 string recently i had a reason to find nice. I, all i need is a reason i need a gig that lets me buy the guitar i need yeah. like i only have one i don't have a lot of gear i have one guitar that each guitar has a job but I did not have the twelve string yet, so uh, so now I can play um, more than a feeling, and it sounds just like the song or or whatever. Isn't Cashmere the Zeppelin tune? Is Cashmere on twelve? Oh. There's so many. So many. Uh, yeah, Cashmere. Uh, what's the um, Wish You Were Here? Pink Floyd. That's another. That's another. Oh, go-to tune that's on. That's on twelve string. It's the yeah. first thing I did when I got it was took it, take it home and try to remember all the old songs that. Yeah, of course. Only sound right on the twelve string. <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I. I. I love electric and I love crafting a tone. Um, yeah. Primarily, okay. but but mm-hmm. I do I do love playing acoustic guitar. There's nothing quite like it. I really like classical. I love the warmness of an oh, Allen string yeah. guitar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, talk about that though, crafting a tone on an electric guitar, because that is something I would imagine a lot of people aren't really aware of or haven't really maybe thought of. So this would be a really good opportunity for you to kind of talk about that special thing that electric guitar players do. Sure. I mean, you know, what we're, what we are doing in the modern age is attempting to recreate digitally the sound of an amplifier that is... It has tubes on fire, sending sound waves out of a speaker and and make and, and and creating resonance in the cabinet. Like it's all this stuff that happens, you know, in the real world. Uh, and and doing that uh, it, it, in a computer is a lot easier than it used to be. Uh, mm. I I don't keep my guitar amp and mic set up regularly because a lot of what I want to do does I, I can do with with plugins and with uh, amp mm-hmm. emulation software there is so many uh, <laughs> and a lot of them aren't that bad but um, I find that like uh, I have sort of a, 
uh, collection of tones I go to by default for 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 the the sounds I like. If it's a soaring mm-hmm. lead guitar tone, or if it's a something with a pitch shifter on it, uh, something strange or something fuzz tone. Um, but every single every single song I do, I try to I try to do something. Unless it's a traditional metal track, I try to do something a little different. I try to make guitar something sound a little strange about it, just to to do something new. Sure. Um, but yeah, a lot, there's a lot of software out there for a, a very reasonable price to 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 allow you to take a, take your electric guitar, plug it into your interface, and sound like uh, an amp you might expect to see at a at a, at a big rock show. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not it's not difficult to get there. Uh, again, it's it's the you know it's what you do with the tools uh, in the end. But uh, but yeah, it's a lot easier to do that than than uh, you used to be able to for sure. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. My favorite, um, my favorite software right now that no one I really know is using is called S Gear S hyphen G E A R. It's a, it's a guitar amp simulator that I find just sounds real. It's the mm. most real sounding one that I've found. It wow. isn't. It doesn't have the digital harshness. It's a lot warmer. It has a lot more uh, analog artifacts and things that you expect to hear in a tone. A tone is supposed to be dirty. It's not supposed to be perfect if that's what you're trying to do. So mm-hmm. I like that one a lot. If you're a guitar player and you're looking, you're, you're, you're VST shopping, uh, <laughs> S gear is very cool. Very, okay. I've used it to play live as well. So, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how often are you getting out there live? You mentioned, you know, Metroid Metal doesn't play very much, but I'm just curious, you know, how much you're actually out performing. You know, I I was on a pretty good tear before COVID. I, I with the solo uh, stemage show. You know, I I finally got the uh, nerve up to set up the laptop and make some videos and do all the things that people do when they do these solo shows. And I played yeah. several. Uh, I played Mag West. I played uh, went down to to L.A. and played open for a buddy of mine's band. And I had several gigs set up. I had one in Seattle set up. I was really excited about. And then and then it all and it all turned into airplane credit. Um, <laughs> So I haven't played a lot, and I did a I did one live stream, um, but other than the recent Metroid Metal show uh, that we did, and there was one this past summer, not playing out a lot. It's it's a it it takes a little bit of training every time it's time. I got it three weeks before. I got to stand up and and not look at my guitar neck and kind of <laughs> figure out how to do it again. Yeah. Um, I enjoy it. I do find it a little bit stressful. Again, I'm a kind of a control freak, so if I don't know mm. exactly how things are going to go. Or uh, what the room's like. It's a, it's it can be a little overwhelming, but uh, I do enjoy it. So yeah. I'd like yeah. to do more. I just haven't quite gotten back in that that swing yet. Mm-hmm. Do you have plans to come back to VGM Con next year? I have plans on convincing as many people as possible, musician people like my yeah. buddy. You know, I, VGM Con. I may have said this to you too, but it just felt like a gigantic green room. It was just yeah. all the talent for Mag and all these other events, yeah. all the people that are that was just like hanging out backstage is what yeah. it was what it felt like, and music pouring out of every room. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I really really enjoyed it, and uh, it's reminded me how many fun music people I've met over the years because I ran into people I had no idea were going to be there, and they didn't know oh, I was cool. Be there. It's just it's just <laughs> so awesome. cool to, to see him there. Yeah. So absolutely, Mag is is a is a lot, um, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's just because the fan base is so big, and this big, isn't yeah. this isn't quite as much of a fan con. I know, I know people were that were there that weren't musicians, but mm-hmm. it's not really built for for that, right? It isn't right. Um, the the panels are educational. Uh, mm-hmm. The you know, there's a lot of stuff going on that doesn't necessarily interest uh, a, a, a fans. But we're all fans, so yeah, yeah. Uh, but absolutely, I will, I will, I will be back in a heartbeat. I, I can't wait to the twenty twenty one, and then skipped a year and came back. So okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty was that. Yeah, that was right before shutdown, like days before shutdown. So yeah. Did you go to that one? Yes, but I wasn't there there as much. I I was I did a panel and I was like there for the panel and gone. Mm-hmm. Like I, yeah. I was working and yeah, that was I was doing the morning show. I didn't take any time off around it and this time I took time off around it and um you know, I I encourage folks to either stay a day longer or come a day early and we'll do some fun Minneapolis stuff. I just love it here yeah. and um it's a good spot and 
hopefully the weather's good. <laughs> we never know, obviously. I don't think you know anywhere in the United States in April what it's no, going to be don't. like, you know, like what you the don't. hell. So, but um, it was, yeah. but it really was, uh, it was so much fun. It was, uh, it, yeah. that was just before the, the Metroid Metal birthday was happening that, that okay. next week. So yeah. it just made, I was just thinking about that constantly about how, how, how much things have changed, how big the scene mm. is and how many mm -hmm. musicians are being created because of the love of video game music, yes. you know? Yes. It's not it's not something they're discovering after they've already taken lessons. I mean, I think these there's a lot of kids that are learning how to play difficult instruments because yes. they want to play the songs they love and that's yep. incredible. So this is just it's if anything best. helping to further that, which I can I can do nothing but support for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Grant, what more do you want to talk about? I mean, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I will say I have a couple of really strange things I'm working on. I'm, I'm about oh, to finish uh, about to finish a short film, my first short film, which I'm oh, very excited cool. about. Is it the first time you've scored a picture? Um, I, yes, except okay. like cut scenes. <laughs> like sure. I've scored for like sound design and, and music for stuff like that, but this is sort yeah. of you yeah. know narrative beginning to end. Not a very a particularly long piece, but. Um, it was. It's been a lot of fun to work on, and I don't cool. know the where that's going to to go or what's going to happen. But it, it's been a completely different, a, a new thing for me, and mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. a couple other strange multimedia ish, like game adjacent things, I'm working on too. So it's just it's fun to keep pivoting, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's been it's been great. So I it's, yeah. yeah, excited to 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 try some new stuff. It's always fun to try new stuff. Y yeah, what do you like about working on the film? Um, I think like the most, I got lucky that the people that I was involved with, they had, um, I, they knew of my music. They knew my music. Okay. They didn't want me to create my music for this. They didn't want me to just make a bunch of stemmage stuff. They wanted me to do what made sense for this. And this is what they thought made sense for this, but they, mm -hmm. they had faith that I could do that. Um, cool. just cause they know kind of what my stuff sounds like. Mm -hmm. Um, and so already I feel like I was in a pretty good place to, to, um, make a case for the stuff I was making. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and so right off, basically uh, what I'm trying to say is that I worked with, I got lucky to work with some good people outright. If I had been hired sort of more cold call style, maybe it wouldn't have gone quite as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say that I, I have enjoyed um working with someone else to help to uh, to help uh, capture their vision in, in in musical form it's mm -hmm. again it's the same situation of i might have an idea of something that represents something and i may go and then i was completely wrong in how i was interpreting something yeah. and need to be corrected uh, but there's other times I brought completely left field ideas to the table and it absolutely worked in the end. So I, I, I enjoy that kind of back and forth, but it has to be with a team that you, you know, that you respect and you work well with and stuff. So that's, right. that's, that's been really important. Right. Um, and I, that I got lucky in that regard mm -hmm. for this project. So but it's yeah. been fun. Well, one other thing I, I neglected to, to ask about, because you, you mentioned them a couple of times in this chat tonight, you can just see in your credits that you've done a lot of work with Devolver Digital as well. So uh, mm. do you mind talking about that too? Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a mm -hmm. company called Imagos Films that does all of the Devolver or has done all the Devolver uh, summer showcase media blowout fake yeah. E3 shows. For people who don't know, they're not like regular E3 shows. They're like... They're like heady, fourth wall busting, anti marketing <laughs> genre films, essentially, that have happened every summer uh, okay. in sequence, start with the same starring cast and different <laughs> movie themes for each one. Uh, and so I got, I, um, several years ago, John Robert Matz has been, has done all those. So, okay. and he could speak a lot of that, to a lot of that as well. But uh, there was one year where he reached out and said, Hey, we are wanting to do, this was the pandemic episode. This was the episode oh, where they man. actually pulled off filming for you know this was wow. i guess right after the pandemic had started or a little while after and they wanted some sort of like victorious rock song sort of this like you know for a bunch of thumbs ups that were going to happen by all of the people the crew that worked on it during the credits so i wrote credits music and i got my buddy the arcadian to sing uh, on the track and we wrote this kind of like really inspiring almost rocky like kind of 80s anthem 
for it. And then that worked, worked really well. So I just kept doing it. I just kept getting pulled in to do credits themes. And each credits theme was sort of based on a different property. So the year after that was um, Friends. Yeah, it was 80, It was 90 sitcoms, right? Oh, God. Yeah. And I think last year was um, Never Ending Story. So I wrote, oh. I actually got a Jupiter, uh, emulated Jupiter, because that's what they used on Never Ending Story. I found almost the exact patches for everything, and I wrote a new version of the Never Ending Story theme with a duet, because it's a duet with my wife and my buddy, the Arcadian. Oh. Um, <laughs> so... Boy, I'll tell you what, that that's been those have all been brain breakers, but it's been fun because I've had to try and write bops. Like I've had to try and write like <laughs> I've had to leave Card of Darkness and try and write a pop song. Uh <laughs> and that's again, that's a whole With different a thing. I probably yeah. I probably wouldn't have done if it wasn't for for right? opportunity, you know. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. um, but it's been great. They're a bunch of weirdos and it's always fun <laughs> to do stuff with them. So that's how that how that happened. Awesome. Good. Cool. Well, I'm just so grateful you're out there making music because I've enjoyed every note of it. And uh, I just can't wait to hear what you're coming up with next. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, it's, it was a pleasure running to you at uh, VGM Con. I, I, Absolutely. You're up there uh, on stage with uh, Videri. And I'm like, who's this person who knows everything about Videri? And, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good friends with Rosie. And I was oh, like, oh, Rosie's that's Emily. Best, yeah, she yeah. runs this rad podcast and she's cool. She's, gonna, she's family. So... It was a good excuse to say hello. I didn't know I'd be I'd be a guest, but I'm honored. Oh, so. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I met you. And um, yeah, it was nice. I can't wait for you to come back. And uh, uh, we'll do this again. We'll do this yeah. again sometime for sure. So thank you so much. Sounds Grant. good. Thank yeah, you. Cool.